today we are at the Hans Herr House. I'm Mark and this is Andrew Lefevre. How are you? Hans Herr House was built in 1719 by Hans Herr and the oldest Mennonite meeting house on this side of the Mississippi, I believe. And Andrew had, yeah, we're, we're not inside it today. It is locked. Circumstantial difficulties. So, Andrew's going to tell you a little bit more about the specifics of the house. So, as you can see, you have your quality and luxury field stone. They would have got out of the field or out of maybe a local quarry or stone spot they would have found. So they used what they had. If you pan over here and look at the side, get a side view of this, uh, this, this nice home here, you'll see that the windows are not regularly spaced and they are not all the same width as homes are have windows today because they, they put windows in the rooms where they needed them and they cut them out and they laid the stone in or as best they could and made little slots for the windows. You'll also notice a peaked roof. It's more peaked than a standard home today because where these people originated from was mainly southern Germany and what is today Switzerland. And so there was a lot of snow in the winter time and they wanted the snow to fall off and away from the house. Thus the peaked roof. So. The house was used as a barn for many years after the herds lived in it and that allowed it to stay well preserved and in its original condition and not get mo modern upgrades such as indoor plumbing and electricity. And the shutters still work. So in case there's a big storm coming and you're in the Hans Herr house, you can close the shutters. Luxury. This is a pig pen. It's a little later than the Hans Herr house was. It was built after the house was, but this is where they might have kept pigs and it, they'd have this little door where pigs can go in and get out of the weather and that would allow them to stay out of the rain or snow or you know any other inclement weather. Yeah, and I, I would say that, you know, back in the day, you know, you would have all sorts of animals on a farm such as they would have had here at the Hans Herr house. They would have had pigs and chickens and cows and horses or mules. They would have had all sorts of animals. It would have been like an old McDonald farm. But today, you know, the farming operations are a little more specified. You either have a, sometimes you either have like a chicken farm or a hog farm or a dairy farm. Sometimes you have a mix. But back then, uh, everybody had a few of, e of, of, uh, had a few of each type of animal and they would have done all their own butchering and and I think we'll talk about butchering and smoking a little later, yeah, yeah. won't we Mark? Yeah, there, there's also a smokehouse on the premises, we'll get there later. So uh, yeah, this is a pig house years ago. Hello, we're here now at the Millstones, isn't that right Mark? That's right, that's right Lafitte. These Millstones, there's not a mill on the property, but they would have come out of mills from probably around the area. Mills are built shortly after the Mennonites came over in 1710. They needed a way to process their wheat to make flour, to make bread and other food items. So, mills were a very important part of life in Lancaster County and in colonial America years ago. These are just some examples of the large stones that would have been, could have been in any number of mills scattered around Lancaster County years ago. And the, as Mark said, they started springing up a little after the first Mennonites and the first settlers came. And little towns might have grown up or grew up around these mills as they were scattered around the county and around Pennsylvania back in the day. And many were grist mills uh, used for processing grain into flour. So these, that's a, these stones would have ground against each other, and that would have ground the little kernels of wheat and grains down into fine powder like flour. That's right, so very important part of agricultural and rural life back in the day. We're now at the blacksmith shop. I'm with my assistant, Andrew. And Hello again. I'm Mark, you know, and the blacksmith shop was a very important part of colonial society. The blacksmith would make common farm tools such as hammers and axes and knives and other miscellaneous tools and would make other things such as hooks and handles and things for doors and latches and things that you don't commonly need around the house. That's right. If you needed it on the farm or in the mill or in the shop, the blacksmith or gunsmith probably made it. You know, they had their nice watering trough out here so Farmer Bob down the road could hitch up his favorite mare and come on down with a spring wagon to the blacksmith shop and the horse could get a drink of water while he goes in and 
explains to the blacksmith that he needs a new pair of horseshoes for the horse, or he needs a new handle for a bucket of water, or, or whatever he may need. The blacksmith could, could fix him up mighty well, I imagine, and, and then where they would go on their way. So these, these like, uh, like mills, for, could probably be found all over the place, probably, Mark, right? At each I, little community. I think so. They were needed everywhere. That's right. So while this is not the original blacksmith shop on this location, it came from nearby in the northeast part of, Lanc of the Lancaster area. So beautiful afternoon at the Hans Herr this would not. This Thank tractor you. would not have been found here when Hans Herr came over. It was a later invention for making farm work easier by eliminating the need for horses and as much manual labor. While they're, not, while they're very primitive, they were still easier to handle than horses. Yeah. And when the men, when Hans Herr and his sons and grandsons and great-grandsons would have been out in the field hard at work after they came here clearing timber or plowing the fields or bringing in the sheaves when it was time for their noontime meal or when it was time for supper, you better believe that Mrs. Herr would ring the farm bell. Dinner time at the Hans Herr house. This is a replica smokehouse that would have been found on different locations around the county and across the country. While it's not original to the Hans Herr settlement, it was brought here to show people what, what, what a smokehouse would have been like. And inside there's racks that you can hang meat from and preserve that for the winter so you'd have meat to feed your family. So. This is the smokehouse where you smoke stuff. That pretty well covers smokehouse. This is a kiln for baking bread. You light a fire and you put your bread in through that door and it would cook and that would be a kiln. You could make bread and other various flour based products. And it, I don't think it's original to the Hunter settlement either, but it's also here to show you what a kiln would have been like. This would have mostly been the woman's job to make baked bread and... It's not ready, Mom! This is the outhouse. Well, hey, look, John, look at this new running gear on steel wheels. Well, wouldn't that be nice to put that tobacco ladder on in that, the spring? That would be really nice. It'd probably roll better than the one we got. Probably would work a lot better, yeah. Wouldn't that stove be nice in the kitchen? I think Mom was saying something about it being a little inefficient. Yeah, I think it's getting a little, uh, the draft is starting yeah, to go on that one. It's only $14.95. Boy, that'd be, that's like a summer savings there for, well, we could think about it. Maybe an early Christmas present before winter sets in. Oh, oh uh, excuse us. Uh, we're, we're just taking care of a little uh, business here at the Hans Herr outhouse. Mm -hmm. Got the luxury two-seater option, so it's for dual units. So we wanted to build the outhouse right. We were only going to do it once, so better just do it right the first time. Stay a little warmer in the winter time that way, I guess. I, I guess so. I don't know what the reasoning was. But... Yeah. Well, we're just gonna we're just gonna get back to uh, to work here. Thank you. Thank you. We thank the Hans Herr House for allowing us to do the tour, and the, the public's welcome back anytime. We hope you learned something about a little bit about local history. Very important to understand where we came from and how this community all got started. So this is a little bit about what everybody's heritage was, a little, was like years ago, right here in your own backyard at the Hans Herr House. Again, I'm Andrew. And I'm Mark. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, you're quite welcome, Mark. And uh, Thanks to our cameraman, Donovan. And uh, that'll do her. Yeah, thank you. That'll do her.